All right, welcome back to the PHP 101 series. Uh, we're going to continue our conversation about object oriented programming, and in this video, we're going to talk about methods. Um, we're going to dive just a little bit deeper into methods. So, without any further ado, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the file, and I'm not going to um, uh, change this instantiate file from the last video. I'm just going to duplicate that, and I'm just going to call this one a methods.php. And um, let's see, in this one what I want to do is uh, let's get rid of, well, we'll leave it off for now and we'll change it as we go. All right, so we kind of stubbed out this method right here called heat. Um, so we can have many different methods and we can have as many as of those that we want uh, inside of the house uh, class, okay? And then we'll have access to those. Uh, later once we uh, actually instantiate or build the object from this class. All right, so the first thing that we want to do is let's add to this and let's just say, I'm going to give this a default value of, um, let's just say two. All right, so in here, what I want to do is I want to say this, remember we're going to access our, uh, when you're talking about inside the class, you're always using the keyword this and we're going to say this uh, temp is equal to this temp plus add okay so this uh, method now of heat will actually increase the temperature of the house okay um, while we're here let's go ahead and create another method and we'll call this one uh, cool so public function cool and we'll just give this, um, you know what, I want to, instead of calling this one add, let's just do temp equals two, and this is temp. And this one, what we're going to do, we're also going to give it a temp uh, with a default value of two. And what I want to do is, uh, this is going to be the exact opposite. We're going to say this temp is equal to this temp minus temp okay <clears throat> so now if I run these on the instantiated uh, objects it's going to manipulate the temp value here so for example let's go ahead and after we instantiate house one uh, house one is they're both going to have a starting temp of 65 degrees so what I can do inside my code after I've instantiated it is I can say house one and let's just say I want to heat that one so I'm not going to pass any uh, params I'm just going to say heat now you run these methods uh, the same as you access a property with the uh, skinny arrow but it gets the methods obviously are functions so they get the open and closing params so then if I go ahead and um, var dump house one, you'll see that house two still has an internal temp of 65 degrees, whereas house one has a temperature of uh, 67. And it has one of 67 because we didn't pass in a new temp, so it's using uh, the default value of two, and it's going to add that default value of two to this uh, the current value. So if you look at this line of code, it's this temp, which is referring to this one, so that'll be 65, and we're setting that equal to this temp, which is 65, uh, plus, and then what we're passing in here is temp, uh, the parameter temp, and that will be 2 by default because we didn't add anything. So let's save that and refresh, and I'm still on instantiate. I need to go to the new file name is methods, so let me change that. Methods. So now if we look at house one, its internal, internal temperature is 67, but the house two internal temperature is still 65 because I haven't done anything to manipulate that yet. So it just has its starting value. All right, so now if I go and I change this say to uh, 22, which would be a drastic increase of temperature, um, refresh. Now the internal temperature of house one 
is 87 degrees. And if, um, let's just say now I want to cool house 2, we can run cool, and I want to cool it by 5 degrees. So if I go back now and refresh, we can see that we still have the temperature of 87 degrees in house 1, but house 2 now is 60 degrees. Okay? So that is how you run a method uh, that's in a class. So a method is pretty much uh, a function, okay, and it lives inside the class. And you usually use these to uh, manipulate the, the properties or display the properties or do something with the properties of this class, okay? Not always. There are times when you don't, but um, by and large, uh, this is the why you would use object-oriented programming is because I can define a blueprint to build many objects from and they're gonna have a set of properties and a set of methods that I can manipulate the data with so now all of these methods and properties are packaged up into one class usually you wouldn't uh, keep a class in in the same file as your the rest of your code you would usually put these into um, a separate file and that's how you can reuse this house class in many different files or more importantly in in other projects so maybe you have another project that you're creating and it also needs a house now a house is a weird uh, admittedly a weird uh, way class to build um, but I just wanted to simplify this and show you what a how what a class and what an object is okay and um, but a real world example would be like a user's class and so you could have a logged in user to your to your site and that logged in user could have many properties like their password, their username, their first and last name, their address, their credit card number, everything else could be stored as properties on that user. And then there could be methods uh, that would manipulate that or do something with it. For instance, you might have a user login method that would actually log the user into your site. You could have another method that would um, you know update their password so if they wanted to create a new password you would have that and it would manipulate that object okay so that is a real world example of one that you'll build all the time usually is a user I um, mean I wouldn't mean all the time but it's quite often that you'll have a user class and it can be referring to any sort of user or whatever but anyhow I just wanted to give you guys that uh, as an example and uh, I don't know my, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> um, hmm. All right. Well, it, at since my, uh, I actually hit some sort of like um, combination, and something's going on here with my editor. So it's a good place to stop this video. But just remember that a method is simply a function that lives in your class that you can later uh, call and use inside of your application uh, on your object so I'm using this, I'm calling this method on this object so the object is house 1 the method is heat and then we're passing in a parameter you don't always have to pass in a parameter uh, you don't even now always have to give it a default value but if you're manipulating the properties oftentimes you will have a parameter that is passed into there so I hope that helps guys go back and refresh the video if you need uh, uh, rewind it, uh, watch it again, and make sure you really understand the difference between properties and methods. So in the last two videos, the last video we talked a lot about properties and instantiation. In this video we expanded and we talked a little bit more about methods. Alright, so in the next video we will continue on our discussion of object-oriented programming and I look forward to it. If you guys like this, uh, make sure that you comment, like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so that you are notified when I release new videos. Alright guys, I'll see you in the next video. Talk to you later.